Let's talk about the Roxanne Atessa Integrated Amplifier. Back to the thrift shop. Appreciate you stopping in for another great video. I'm still trying to beat my Musical Fidelity M3SI, and I have yet to find an amplifier. So, will the Roxon Atessa integrated amplifier beat it? Let's talk about it. From the first time I saw the Roxon Atessa, I kind of fell in love. You ever see a product? Maybe it's someone else's videos. Uh, Maybe it's just the pictures, the way it looks, the nice grills on top of here, the sleek, slender, chamfered edges. It's, it's a work of art. It's heavy, too. I'm not even sure how many pounds it is, but I'll try to put something in here. Um, but it's heavy. It, it is a lump compared to the M3SI. So, pretty cool. Um, I like the center dial. Obviously, the M3SI is the same thing. Uh, the, the dial on here is a much better feel than the Musical Fidelity. Um, just, uh, really cool. But as the title indicates, really kind of frustrating. So, so first you get this amplifier, you plug it in, you realize a few things. Number one, you have to use the, you have to use this to do anything, uh, meaningful in the menu department of this, because it's a pretty complicated device. It is quasi even though it's not a streaming amplifier it acts like it's a streaming amplifier and therefore you have an app so I buy this thing plug it in i'm excited i want to hear this thing it's 80 watts into 8 ohms 130 watts into 4 ohms 4 ohms stable um you know i think it's around 2200 dollars list price i've seen it on sale for around 1600 bucks so not a cheap unit um, you know, more expensive than the Musical Fidelity M3SI. So I was hopeful that this thing would kind of win. And as I mentioned, I plugged it in, a little bit frustrated. So I had to turn the dial all the way up. I mean, I was cranking it all the way up. Just, it's not a linear volume pot. And I'm sure the knob is digital. Everything's digital because how your push button and microprocessors and stuff are doing in, inside of here and I just it was frustrating um, so what I realized is that you do have the gain settings inside the menus so I would try to go into my phone I was changing all of the uh, basically all the gains to high that I could just to get because it seems like you have to crank the stereo and again it's not linear so it's barely, barely, barely. Then it jumps up really high, really fast at the end. So, um, and then the second part of this frustration with this dial, while it looks cool, um, as soon as you turn this unit off, so you had it there, it will not come on to the same setting that you had it back on. So we'll turn it back on. It has to wait. It has a cool relay clicks. Wait for it. It's cool. You can see where it's at. It has a safety device that if you're listening over a certain level on the volume pot, in this case, and they're saying it's certain dB, it reverts back to this setting. So every time you come back onto this, you have to go through and turn this thing way up to dial it in. I do like old school. I barely ever move this knob on Musical Fidelity M3SI. Barely. It, I know the volume that I'm going to listen to, and it's fine. This is frustrating. It's frustrating if you're using it for home cinema, which I did. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit frustrated with kind of how the app works, how it didn't actually adjust the gain settings. And I had to physically use the remote, go into here, and adjust these settings. So, um, 
you go into here and you can adjust you can see there um, high sensitivity high high center balance um, so you can go in there and you you have to do that uh, because it's just frustrating um, so it's kind of cool they have all these features but I think it's a drawback at the end because it doesn't seem to work in the amplifier you basically have to turn it up still with everything on high I still have to turn it almost all the way up to get it loud um, there's a lot of usable space in between if you're a low level listener this is a great amplifier because it, it does give you that opportunity to really dial in it to lower level um, so going on to the moving magnet part of this uh, because I do live vinyl I do have my Technics right next to it, right there, and just did not. I didn't like the integrated moving magnet. It and we'll get to the sound. We'll get to the sound because it just sounded flat. I thought, hey, okay, I will take my iFi and preamp phono preamp, and I'll plug it in, and my iPhono preamp for my fi is one of my favorite things in the world uh, for vinyl for the price the value that it provides and how holographic and the sound stage is just amazing i have not had one amplifier where it didn't sound good with other than this one plugged it in and it sounded just like the inbuilt moving magnet so it's kind of dumbfounded why using the inbuilt moving magnet uh, and going through the analog one input with my external phono preamp, I got the same sound. And I was really scratching my head. I'm like, this thing just doesn't give me the sound that I want. It was flat, it was dull, um, was not holographic. So it was a little bit frustrating. So I did reach out to, I believe, uh, the North American rep up in Canada to ask a really stupid question. And I asked the question is, are the analog inputs going through a digital stage, being digitized, and then going back to it? It's built-in analog converter? And the answer was no. And that question sounds crazy, but when you hear, it doesn't matter what you plug into it, it all has the same sound. And I was just frustrated. No matter what I plugged into this thing, it had the same sound signature, and that was very frustrating. So it's hard to change your inputs if you want to upgrade, let's say a phono preamp or something, and you're getting the same sound. Now, maybe that person, that rep, didn't know. Uh, maybe Roxanne can say. I mean, I mean it's, it's hard to fathom that someone would take an analog signal, put it in the digital domain, and then do a digital to analog conversion. But that's just how this thing sounds. Um, and for me, again, I'm still trying to beat the musical fidelity on 3SI. And I've been trying and trying, and I'll keep trying. Uh, but... For me, the first thing that I evaluate an amplifier is clarity. Number one is clarity. So what do you mean by clarity? Well, when I run something in, I want to hear a difference coming out. I don't want the preamp section of the amplifier to smooth out the sound. I don't want it to change the sound stage. I don't want it to do anything. I want it to be super squeaky clean so that I know that I can upgrade something outboard of the amplifier and hear the results through the speaker. I want the amplifier to get out of the way, just amplify. I don't want it to do anything else. Number two, sound stage. I need something where the sound is beyond the actual speakers. And I find the amplifier and or pre-amplifier sections of the amplifiers are the key part of this. And if it is closed off between the speakers, I am not a fan of it. And those are the two key things that, that I have to go for. Certainly, there are frequency response, right? How tight is the bass, treble extension, things of that nature. Um, a lot of times, if you have clarity, that will be dictated by what you're plugging into it, whether it be a CD player or a turntable with a photo preamp. So you get what I'm saying. The clarity is the key. So the amplifier just got to do a good job of the amplification. In this case, I think it's trying to do too many bells and whistles because... The sound, the sound is just, it's between the speakers, and maybe that's you. Maybe you like that, and maybe I, you know, it doesn't fit what I like, so maybe you like it. So if you own this, you're watching this video to reassure yourself that you have the best amplifier, be happy with what you have. Don't listen to what I'm saying as a negative. I'm telling you my experience and some of the frustrations that I had. 
So please just keep that in mind. But uh, it is laser focused between the speakers. So if you're a home cinema person and you you don't want to hear sounds coming from the side of your head, almost like you have a virtual um, surround system, then maybe this is for you because you're going to be locked on the vocals. You're going to be, everything's going to be between the speakers and it's great. When I like to listen to music, I want it to envelop me around me. Oh, you know, this is not a tube amp, but it should give me some sound outside the speakers. And that's one of the things that I judge. Me, it didn't do it. Now, compared to the, the musical Fidelity M3SI, which has great sound stage, so we'll put that aside and great clarity, um, the sound of this, um, the bass is tighter than the musical Fidelity, which is great. Um, very tight. Not like uh, the Class D amp, but not as loose as the M3SI, which can be a little boomy on the side. So that's one area that I do want something better. Uh, Mid-range, they're about par on equal. I believe there's even better treble extension on the Roxy Matessa. So if you don't like musical fidelity's kind of treble, there is a lot of energy with musical fidelity, and you may like, you know, a Yamaha, which is silky smooth. Um, this amplifier will not be for you. Um, so tipped up treble, tight bass, mids are neutral, sound great, but it's just laser focused between the speakers. So um, and it didn't provide that clarity as I mentioned. Everything coming in kind of had the same sound. So it's the preamp section is getting in the way of the amplifier. And I proved that by running the Roxana test as a power amp connected to the M3SI as a preamp. And the sound came through. The characteristics of even having tighter bass came through. And it was a match made in heaven. Now, no one wants to have two amplifiers that can do the same thing individually. But it was a test to prove that the preamplifier section of this unit is kind of the downside of it. It works great as a power amp. I absolutely love it. It is better than the Musical Fidelity M3SI in every way. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool amplifier. It looks great. Um, just a little bit of the bugs and kinks with the app, not changing gain settings, and then having to use the remote, and then having to always turn this up after listening at about here. Um, so, yeah, it's just a, it's a good amplifier. If you own it, you should like it. Just know some of the differences between the amplifiers and maybe what you like or don't like. So, anyways, if you like this video, you like what I'm doing here, just please like, subscribe. It helps the channel grow. Every person helps. Don't be a freeloader and watch free videos. And not help those content creators that like me that are trying to make a difference. And we enjoy our hobby. Take care. Peace. All right, so we're going to do a unit tour of the Rocks and Atessa integrated amplifier we'll start with the power button really cool turn on um, you're gonna watch it blink and then you're gonna hear like three relays click in wait for it wait for it wait for it pretty cool i do like uh, how this looks so you do get a uh, designation here lit up on the screen of uh, what your input is so we have analog input one right now and uh, you'll see on the back um, all the various inputs that you get. Uh, we also obviously have the center dial, just like the uh, Musical Fidelity M3SI. And we have a 3.5 uh, headphone jack. And you can see the volume dial. Uh, it's got a great feel to it, uh, resistance on it. It's great. Um, it, I like how this thing looks. It's sleek, it's heavy. Um, to change, let me do this with the other hand, to change the inputs you have to actually, if you just press in really quick, you're going to mute. Um, if you leave out, you have to press in and rotate to go to all your various inputs, including Bluetooth. And you also get an app. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, because there are some features here that, that we do need to talk about. Uh, also, you do get a remote. Uh, nothing crazy or too exciting. Um, you get the power button. Um, yeah, pretty standard. But uh, to get into menu mode and some of the things, you actually have to have this. See if it'll work. 
there. Just trying to get it to move. There we go. So you do have to use a remote. Um, got off standby, uh, auto. Um, you got your headphone if you want to go change your basically change the output. Um, you have high sensitivity on A1. And you can adjust this through the phone app, but um, the problem I have, none of the none of the things change when I use the app. So the app is actually pointless. Um, I thought maybe it would update the system. Uh, one of the things that I did here is I did turn on AV bypass so I could run this as a power amp. And we're going to talk about that um, for the power amp here. Uh, and you do get your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth code. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, to cycle through uh, all the stuff that you can do. So all it is a cheap, flimsy, um, standard kind of remote. It is absolutely something that you have to have with this integrated amplifier. All right, so you do get your speaker terminals um, all the way here on this left side here. Um, be the right side if uh, you had it in the normal way, but it's backwards. Uh, kind of cheap, um, it's, and they're really close together. So, depending on how you have your cables terminated, um, this can be a real problem. Um, everything's close together. Your ground for your phono is right here. I mean, th there's very little room, and they have all this open space here. Um, but not complaining. Um, so you do have your moving magnet phono preamp input here. You get analog one, analog two. Uh, you have a preamp output or sub output. Pretty cool. You do get um, two coax digital inputs and two optical. So you get a total of four digital inputs. Pretty cool. You do have a 12 volt trigger in and out and infrared input uh, if you have that kind of module also. Um, again, this is where the, I believe the streaming part of this amplifier would be here if it were the streaming version. So pretty cool, pretty slim, uh, a little bit problematic there on the speaker cable side, but otherwise pretty standard, pretty nice for the price. Mm -hmm.